Rwanda is picking itself up from the 1994 genocide in which an estimated 800,000 people died. Increasingly, this small, densely populated country is seen as a model of economic growth in Africa. The single biggest obstacle to improving the standard of living is that nine out of 10 Rwandans have no access to electricity. But thanks to a group of British students, a novel way of using solar power for villages off the grid is brightening the prospects. The one million people living in the capital, Kigali, consume almost half of the electricity in Rwanda. The government has pledged to connect 16% of the population to the grid by 2012, up from 10% now. But that still means a majority have no prospect of flicking a switch to the power supply. A group of undergraduate engineering students from Imperial College in London have come up with a power supply solution for people in the countryside with no prospect of being connected. To bring cost-effective and practical renewable energy to developing countries, they created Equinox and chose Rwanda as the incubator for their solar-powered energy kiosk. We felt that as engineers we should be doing something tangible with this, the things we learn in the classroom, which is quite theoretical. So we were looking at different things when we identified electrification in rural areas as quite a big issue. We came to Rwanda, we met with local organisations and proposed our ideas and the reception was really positive. It takes the Equinox team two and a half hours to reach the first energy kiosk they built in Kanka, a village of 50 households only 45 kilometers north of Kigali. Luckily, their kiosk doesn't require blue skies. The kiosk blends in. It's a hut with solar panels on its roof. It powered up in September 2009. This is where it all started. The energy kiosk is basically a solar-powered battery charging station. So we have solar panels on the roof and the batteries, uh, battery boxes, they're charged in the, in the kiosk. So the, the whole system is designed to be completely sustainable, also from a financial perspective. The principle is the same as dropping off a cooking gas container. The empty battery is deposited and a fully charged one is waiting to be taken home. We priced it according to the kerosene model. So currently people use kerosene lamps for lighting and we, we went to different villages and surveyed how much they actually spend on kerosene just for lighting, and we priced it competitively so that they actually also have an economic benefit in the whole system. Lack of maintenance is often the reason why bright ideas such as the solar-powered kiosks fail. The Equinox team created a data collection system so that they can check from a distance that everything is working properly. If there's a problem, their Rwandan partners, the students from the Kigali Institute of Science and Technology, KIST, take over and repair it. So what we can see from this, we can find out the solar radiance, so how much sun is shining on, on the roof. Yeah. We, we can see um, how much current the solar panels produce, yeah. so how much power we get out of it. Yeah. That's a cell phone uh, SIM card. The kiosk shopkeeper, who's been trained by the students, says the battery boxes have been a great success and with good reason. The batteries are used mainly for lighting. They're also used for charging cell phones. Before this kiosk was built up here, people with cell phones had to travel four kilometers to charge their phones. Concerning lighting, people used kerosene. All I can say is that this system solved several problems. Requests for batteries from neighboring villages have poured in, and the 60 existing ones are not nearly enough. There are more than 100 that can come as the, the application letters. Yeah, I mean, next, to next week, we will bring the new, new, new type of battery and it will be 130, 34 batteries. Okay. The power supplied by the kiosks is changing lives. Gaudens Mukangamanyi and her family own a restaurant and bar, and now she's signed up to have a battery. Before, I had problems buying kerosene, but now, with the light, I get more clients, and I can entertain them and serve them whatever they want. The battery boxes are self-contained power supply units made in a workshop in Kigali. Using feedback from customers, the Equinox team has improved the early model. 
This one is not only cheaper, but it's also lighter, more portable, and most importantly, it has an inbuilt inverter. So that makes it virtually a, a portable plug. They want to open little shops with their battery boxes. Uh, one example for that would be a barber shop. So they can use electrical shavers for this. The Equinox customers have also asked for longer cables and more robust lights. And robust they certainly are. First of all, it's, it's brighter than last year. And also, you know, you drop it, nothing happens. Time to present the new battery box to their Rwandan partners at KIST. The Rwandan students help install the equipment and provide insider know-how on local needs. The kiosks have shown they work, can be easily maintained and upgraded, but long-term success depends on Rwandans like the Kigali students taking up the running. Step by step, it takes some process and it needs some money and time, yeah. But that's the next step and Equinox is going to build another kiosk. Today, the students are shopping for missing items in the metal market of Kigali. Time to hit the road again. Destination okay. Batimont, a village of 120 households in southeast Rwanda, near the border with Burundi. Equinox has chosen this location because it's sunny most of the year and is on a main route. This kiosk costs $15,000. So this is our second solar kiosk, uh, where people can come with their batteries and recharge them. This is basically the counter where we can give batteries to the customers. It's not quite finished yet, as you can see, but over here we'll have a, uh, shelves with charged batteries. The kiosk should be operational in a month, and the villagers are impatient. We have to go very far to charge cell phones. Around here, some people have generators that we can use, but for the people that are very far away, close to the border of Burundi, it can take a long time to travel to charge their phone. For now, watching Simon Baterangaya's battery box presentation in the marketplace is just relief from the humdrum of village life, something to talk about during the long, dark evening. Soon, Batimon will get a taste of life with battery power, a huge improvement over candles, charcoal and kerosene. If we win the World Challenge, we could use the money uh, to invest into research. Throughout the year, we spend a lot of time you know, improving our solution, making better designs, uh, both the battery box and the kiosk, you know, optimizing that. And the money would also allow us to build new kiosks next year. Um, that we can try out in different locations and get the feedback to develop a really good solution. Equinox now has the World Challenge platform to appeal directly for your vote. Vote for us because this is heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah. and vote for us because this is a liability risk. A vote for us because we're making a difference. Vote for us because we developed the idea. To change people's lives. Vote for us because you saw us on TV. Vote for us because this place here still needs a lot of work. Vote for us because he says so. <laughs> Vote for us because you can.